Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm now answering question number nine from the International A Level Core Mathematics C34, January 2014 paper from Edexcel. This is a question relevant to the new P4 specification and it's about integration by substitution. So we have to integrate this expression here. Now I'm going to rewrite this slightly as 1 over 4 minus the square root of x dx. This is what actually this is. And I'm going to say, let's think of y as 1 over 4 minus the square root of x. And what we're going to do is we're going to integrate. What we have to do is integrate y with respect to x. That's our objective. That's how that's how we into, you know, find the integral of this. We're integrating what I've called y now with respect to x. Now, with substitution, when you've been introduced with a, a third uh, kind of letter here to use in, in substitution, uh, what the, the, the way I really like to do this is to write it as y dx du, whatever letter we have, so it's du, du. And then I'm going to try to replace the y and dx du with... Um, things in terms of u only. So now, the y part is 1 over 4 minus the square root of x. And that can be replaced with a u. So the next line after that will be the integral of 1 over u, because u is equal to um, 4 minus root x. So, okay, that's the next line after that. But then I've got dx du. Now, we, we know that u is equal to 4 minus the square root of x. We want to find dx du. Now, in previous questions, I found du dx and then found the reciprocal of it. Now, in this case here, all right, du dx will give me something in terms of x, and dx du will therefore be in terms of x as well. And then I'd have to change, make, if I want to make it in terms of u, I have to then substitute this instead of the, the u part. It'll be a bit complicated. So what would be easier in this particular case here is to make x the subject first and then find um, dx du. So what I will do is I will add root x to both sides and take away u from both sides, then square both sides. I'll end up with 4 minus u squared. Now I've got two options here. I could expand this bracket first if I want to, which will give me 16 minus um, 2 times 4 times minus u Okay, 4 times minus u is going to give me um, minus 4u, so it's minus 8u, and then I'll have um, plus u squared, and then I can find the x to u. That's going to give me um, minus 8 plus 2u, okay, dx to u, sorry. Or I could have just done used the chain rule from the beginning. I could have used the chain rule, I could have said 2 times... 4 minus u to the power of 1 times minus 1. Because you multiply by the power, take 1 from the power, and then multiply by the differential what's inside the function, which will give you minus 2 times minus two times 4, which is minus 8, and minus 2 times uh, minus u, which is plus 2u. In either case, you end up with 2u minus 8. Okay, so that's my dx du. So I can replace that with 2u minus 8. And then I've got my du. So now I've end up with something like this. Then we now we can try to simplify this. So what I can do is I can take two outside. Then I've got um, x minus four over u. Not sorry, two u minus eight. What am I doing? Excuse me. There, that's a two u minus eight. You got rid of the x's. That's the 2u. I wrote x for some reason here. Okay, so that's 2u minus 8. That's u minus 4 over u with respect to u. Now everything is ready for us to integrate. I could have left the 2 in here. It's absolutely no problem. I always like to take, if there's a, there's a common factor, I like to take it outside. That's just the way I like to do it. It's no, no problem whatsoever if you leave it inside. So now we can uh, get this ready by, by splitting this into two separate fractions. Okay, I can... This is not of the form where I can use like lin because, not directly, because the numerator is not the differential of what's in the denominator. It's not the same form. This, the, you know, this is a u term. It would have to be just a constant term on top. Here we got another u term. But what I can do is split this into two fractions, which is u over u. 
minus 4 over u. Okay, and then that becomes 1 minus 4 over u. So I have 2 times the integral of 1 minus 4 over u. I still haven't started integrating. I've just spent all that time getting it ready. Now it's ready to integrate. Now I can integrate this. So I have 2 times, and this becomes u minus now, this is now of the form where you can use lin because in the numerator is of the form of the differential force in the denominator. So, I have 4 times the lin of the modulus of u, okay, um, divided by the differential of u, which is just 1. Um, and there's the answer, okay, and then I can say plus c at the end. That's fine. So, now I've got 2u minus 8 lin, the modulus of u plus c. And I know that u is equal to 4 minus the square root of x. Okay, so now, because in the end, the answer must be in terms of x, because we're told to integrate this with respect to x. So we're just using u as a means of being able to do it. So we've got 2 times 4 minus the square root of x minus 8 times lin of the modulus of 4 minus the square root of x plus c. Okay, you could write that as 8 minus 2 root x if you want, that's fine. But there, that's perfectly fine to leave your answer in that form. Okay, and that's the answer to part um, A, 9 part A. Okay, so we've now integrated this um, with respect to, to x and we've got our answer. All right, don't forget the plus c because it's an indefinite integral. All right, now for the next part of the question. It says, a team of scientists is studying a species of slow-growing tree. The rate of change in height of a tree in this species is modeled by the differential equation dh dt equals 4 minus root h over 20, where h is the height in meters and t is the time measured in years after the tree is planted. Find the range in values of h for which the height of a tree in this species is increasing. So, we want to find the range of values of h for which this is an increasing function, basically. So we want to find when dh dt, when the rate of change of the height is greater than 0. Okay, that's what we want to find. dh dt is greater than 0 according to this model. So we want to find when 4 minus the square root of h over 20 is greater than 0. This is the rate of change of height. So when, when it's increasing, when the, when the height is incre increasing, the height's increasing, when its rate of change is positive. So th when this is true, then uh, we know that it's, it's the, the height of the tree is increasing. So now if I multiply both sides by 20, which is no problem because this is a inequality multiplied by a positive number that stays as greater than 0, then I can say let's subtract or add root h to both sides. So I'll have root h on this side. And now I can um, square both sides. That gives me 16 is greater than h. There's no problem with me squaring both sides because I know h is a positive value. All right. And then that, that means h must be less than 16. So, of course, the height of the tree cannot be less than 0. So, the height of the tree is somewhere between 0, greater than 0, and less than 16. Okay. That's the height of the tree. It can't be less than 0. Okay. And it can't be more than 16. Okay. Um, yeah, we want to find when it's greater than when it's increasing. So when it's greater than when it's when it's greater than zero. Therefore, when it's less than 16. So that's the range of values of h for which the height of the tree is increasing. There's the answer for part B. Now part C says, given that one of these trees is one meter high when it is planted, calculate the time it would take to reach a height of 10 meters. Write your answer to three significant figures. All right, so we start off with this differential equation, dh dt is equal to 4 minus the square root of h over 20. So we have to solve this differential equation and find the time that it takes for the height of the tree to reach 10 meters. So to solve differential equations, what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to, like here's dh dt, with respect to t. So if I integrate this side with respect to t, I must also integrate this side with respect to t. So I have 4 minus the square root of h over 20 
integrate with respect to t. Now, these cancel out, and you're left with the integral of dh equals the integral of 4 minus root h over 20 with respect to t. So wherever you see h's have to end up on the side that says dh, and wherever you see t's has to end up on the side that says dt. So here, this 4 minus root h should end up on this side. So I'm going to put here um, 1 over 4 minus the square root of h with respect to h. I'm also going to multiply both sides by 20 to get rid of this 20 on this side. And here, all I'm left with basically is just the integral of 1 with respect to t. Right Now, a lot of people would then go on to integrate this and use plus c and find what plus c is and then continue. I like to do this in a nice, very nice, easy way when I've got this type of situation here. We can use limits because we've got limits here that says given that that one of these trees is one meters high when it is planted. So when it's planted is when time is equal to zero. When time is equal to zero, it's one meters high. It says calculate the time it would take to reach a height of 10 meters. So we need to find the time that it takes to, to reach 10 meters. So what we can do is we can put here t and 10. We want to find the time it takes to reach 10 meters. When we know at zero, initially, its height was one meter. With those limits, we're going to find t directly without having to put plus c. All right, without having to put the plus c. And if you notice, this is of the form of something we integrated. We reintegrated one, 1 over 4 minus the square root of x with respect to x. Now, this is going to give you the same thing, except you're going to have, instead of x, you're going to have h. So I'm going to bring that result across and use it. Okay, so this is the answer that we got in part A. This is the answer from part A. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to put here 20, and I'll put the square brackets. Now, instead of x, I'm going to replace it with h. So this is 2 times 4 minus the square root of h minus 8 times the lin of the modulus of 4 minus the square root of h. And uh, we don't need the plus c because it's a definite integral now. And you have the limits of 10 and 1 equals, and this is going to be, this is just a 1 here. Integral of 1 is going to be just, with respect to t, is going to be t. And between the limits of t and 0. So that's going to give us, I'll just write this part first, t minus 0, which is t. That's what we have to find the time. And we're going to have to replace the h with 10 and with 1. So we have 20 times... We're going to have um, 2 times 4 minus, I don't need this first bracket there, I can leave that, that second bracket out, 2 times 4 minus the square root of 10, minus 8 times the lin of the module of 4 minus the square root of 10. That's going to give us something positive, because square root of 10 is 3 point something, that's fine. All right, and then I have take away from that, the same thing, but instead of um, 10, I'm going to put 1 instead of the h. So we have 2 times um, 4 minus the square root of 1, which is 1, basically. In fact, it's just going to be 4 minus 1, which is, I'll just write it like that. I don't have to write. The square root of 1 is 1, isn't it? So we can just write 2 times 4 minus 1, which is 2 times 3, which will give us 6, minus 8 times the lin of the modulus of 4 minus root 3, 4 minus 1, sorry, which is 3, so it's going to be lin 8, lin 3. Okay, because you're going to have to put 1 instead of the h, so it's 4 minus 1, which is lin 3. Okay, and that should give us our answer. So let's just stick this into the calculator, and then we have to give the answer to 3SF in the end. So let's see if I can make some space here. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to have 20 open bracket, I'll have 2 times 4 minus the square root of 10, close that bracket, minus 8 lin, and brackets 4 minus the square root of 10, okay, close that bracket, then I'll have minus then I'll have 
um, 2 times 3, which is 6. So I'll put this in a bracket to keep that separate from the minus. So I'll take that 6 minus 8 lin 3. So I'll close... One second. So I'm going to close that bracket for the lin and close the bracket for this part and close the bracket for the whole thing for that 20 part. I think I've got it right here. Yeah, 117.617. Seven, so one hundred and seventeen point six one seven. Is that right? Yeah, well, six one seven eight. Now they ask us to round it to three significant figures, if I remember correctly. Yes. So that's going to give us the time is equal to one hundred and eighteen. Now, the time is what was it in again? Years. Well, that's a long time. One hundred eighteen years. Okay, so there's the answer to question number 9, part C, and that answers the whole of the question, I think. Yes, it does. So that completes this question number 9, which is all about differential equations, and also the part A was different, was integration by substitution. Okay, so, um, and as you notice here, we used the answer to part A to help us to deal with part B. To this, deal with this part. All right, so now, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area over here. Other questions from uh, differential equations and solving differential equations um, in this playlist over here. Questions about integration by substitution in the playlist over here, and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on that link. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.